Everyone who has ever worked with data will tell you that it takes a lot of time to clean up your data. Most of the time you are busy making sure that your data gets into the format that you want. Thankfully, the tidyverse has a couple of helper functions that make our life easier. Today we are covering two such functions, namely pivot longer and pivot wider. These functions are truly great because they allow you to switch your data format from long to wide very easily and this is something you need all the time. So today we are covering the basics on these two functions and in the next video we are going to show you advanced tricks that you can pull off with these two functions. But for now we're just going to start with the basics. In a quarter document I've already set up the first code chunk that we will need for this video. For one that is the tidyverse package and then this is a data set from the tidy tuesday challenge which you can download straight from github using this link of course you don't have to type out this link here just look into the description of this video there a link will lead you to our blog and from there you will have access to this code chunk here and this will already give you access to this data set that we want to use in this video here what you can see here is information about Taylor Swift albums. In the column album name, you will find the name of the albums. And then you have something like the album release and you have stuff like the score. We have two different scores, one from Metacritic and one from users. One thing that we might want to do is to generate a line chart that compares these two scores here. Maybe the Metacritic score evolved differently over time compared to the user score. This is something we could immediately check via a line chart. So what this means is that in our quarter document, we would generate a new code chunk. And from there, we would take our data set and we would pass it to ggplot. And then we would have on the x-axis something like the album release here. And then on the y-axis, we really don't have something for that has the scores combined for both of these types. What we could do is on the y-axis, we could take one of those and then we could put in a gm line here. And then we would get a chart and then we would have to copy and paste this whole thing. So we would need another GM line. And then we would have to use on the Y aesthetic of the second layer. We would need a different one, which is user score. And then we would get another chart. But this doesn't look great. We don't even have a legend now. So we have no clue what either of those lines mean. Of course, we could artificially put this in there. But then we still have the problem that the user score and the Metacritic score, you can see that in the data set, they are on different scales. Metacritic goes from 0 to 100 and user score from 0 to 10. So really, we should probably put this into its own window using facet wrap. But again, we have nothing that we could pass to facet wrap that will tell ggplot to make one chart for each of those different columns. Usually, what we would need is to have a column that says either Metacritic or user. So that would describe the type of score. And then we would need another column, which is called maybe score. And it would contain these values here from these cells in one column for all of our data. If we had that, then we could simply say, you know what? We map the Y axis to this score column and the color to this score type column. And then we could get a line chart and then we could use facet wrap. And in there, we would put in this score type to tell ggplot depending on these two things that you find in this column, in this case, it should be Metacritic or user, just make one window for each of those. But that's not what we have, right? We are kind of right now stuck with these two columns, which has all of the correct information, but just assembled in a way that isn't good for ggplot. Consequently, we will need to put a step in between these two things where we rearrange our data a little bit. And this is where pivot longer comes in. This means we take our data set and we pass it to pivot longer. And then we need to specify, okay, what columns do you want to rearrange? We've already asserted that all of our information is contained in these two columns here. So we have to tell pivot longer that we want to target these columns. In this case, we simply say calls is equal to these two column names. So let's get this here, get this there. And then we have told pivot longer, these are the things that you should rearrange. And now what pivot longer needs is an information about where the names should go to and where the values should go to. Let's think about this for a second. We have two things in these two columns, of course. We have values. These are the numbers between 0 and 100 or 0 and 10. And we have names of the columns. And the names right now are the information on the score type, right? This is something we could then, if we had this in a column called score type, we could pass this to ggplot and even use it on facet wrap. 
So this is exactly what Pivot Longer wants. It asks us, okay, this stuff that is inside of the names here, where should it go to? And we say, okay, put this into a column which we call score type, because this is also the column name that we use later on. And then we want to figure out, okay, what's the new column name for all of these values here, for all of them? What's the new name? And we say, okay, the new name is supposed to be score. And if we have rearranged this, if we execute this, we will see that Pivot Longer did exactly what we wanted to. It took these columns here and the column names went to a new column, which we called score type. This is why it asks, where should the names go to? To this new column name, which you find here. And then you simply find the Metacritic score or user score, depending on the stuff that is in the next column, which is the score column. And this score column is filled with the values from our previous data set. And these are these numbers here. And now, once we have that, we can save this into a new data set. Let's call this Taylor Rearranged. We save it and we can put this into our code from before. And now ggplot does exactly what we want. Well, not exactly. We still have the problem of having two different scales here for this one line and for the other line. So we tell facet rep the scales should use separate y aesthetics. And that way you can see that, okay, the Metacritic score and user score look kind of similar over time. Okay, cool. So now that we have rearranged this, we could probably tweak our theme of our GG plot here a little bit more, but that's not really the point of this video. So we just leave it as it is. But what I want to focus on now is that this new data set, if I make this a little bit larger, has 24 rows now compared to the original data set, which has 12 rows now. This is basically the reason why the function that we used is called pivot longer, because it makes the data set longer. In this specific example, the number of columns didn't really change. That's a little bit by coincidence. But really the thing that always happens is that the data set gets longer. And this is why it's called pivot longer. Also, this is the reason why this format, the way it is structured now, is called long format. And the one that we originally had is wide format. So you might wonder now, okay, if this long format is so great, why would we even have a data like that? Why isn't all data stored in this neat long format? Well, for starters, people have to record this data somehow. And often what they use is spreadsheets. And this is just the most natural way to collect data like this. You have a column, Metacritic score, and then you could just input all of the data one by one. And then you don't have to go Metacritic score, user score, Metacritic score, user score, and so on. So that is one reason. But the other reason is that this wide data format is also sometimes very useful. For example, if we would have this Taylor albums, uh, data set here. Let me just give you a couple more lines here. We could pass this to the GT function from the GT package. We should probably select a couple of columns from there. Let's just move, remove EP. They would have something like this. So in this scenario, you could see that this wide format is perfectly suitable for tables that you might want to create. So that is why you sometimes need long formats or sometimes wide formats. It really depends on what you want to build with your data. And because both formats are really important, let us just imagine for a second that we have only this rearranged data set available to us and we have to figure out, okay, how do we get this into a nice format like the data set that we currently don't have so that we can pass it to GT to make a table. So again, we will have to put some formatting in between this. So let's take this data set and then we have to pass it to some function to rearrange it. Basically, we have to go from long to wide format again. And you probably can guess if pivot longer goes from wide format to long format, then pivot wider will do the exact opposite job. And now what this function need is basically the opposite of what pivot longer needed. Pivot longer needed the arguments names too and values too, because it took these things and stuck them into new columns. So that is why pivot wider uses names from and values from. And in this case, the names come from the score type. So this way we get, we'll get two new columns, Metacritic score and user score, because these are the only values that are inside of this score type column. And the values that these new columns will have come from the score column. And if you execute all of this, then you get our previous data set. And this is how you could get from long format to wide format and then stick this into a GT function to create a table. So now you have learned how to go from long format to wide format and from wide format to long format, which is a great start for your data wrangling journeys that you will have ahead of you. If you want to try this out yourself, don't forget to head to our blog and get the code from there. 
and then you can play around with this a little bit. And next week we will do more advanced stuff with pivot longer and pivot wider. These two functions can do a lot and we will see the advanced cool tricks that it can do next week. So stay tuned and see you next time.